Now you might be wondering, why am I choking down a can of cat food? And I'm not eating it for the reason you think. Salmon has a lot of protein, but I'm eating it to prevent something that 90% of adults are deficient in. But first, let's rewind. If you're not there, then you will get there. Getting old is not easy. A lot of my friends are reaching their 30s and 40s, and age is really catching up with them. If they sleep wrong, they have to use a brace. If they move their body just out of skew, they have to lay down to recover. And heaven forbid they have to hold back a sneeze. What's worse is the physical pain that you get can stress you out and contribute to long-term anger. That's why your health and pain is such an important factor in your life. And if you're struggling with your anger, especially the moments when you lash out, check out the Emotional RX program where I can hold you by the hand and guide you through specific tools to help you train to decrease your anger instantly. If therapy isn't working for you, self-help books aren't working for you, podcasts and videos are not working for you, and you want to get better, you want to trigger yourself to be calm instead of angry all the time so you can live a better and happier life with the people who are important to you. Check out the Emotional Arts program and book an appointment with me. So as I see my friends all getting injured because of age, I want to prevent myself from being that bad. And working out is a great way to prevent it. But what other ways can I help prevent some of this from happening? Because the saying goes, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So while I was looking into supplements, I found out a statistic that was extremely shocking. It blew my mind that 90% of adults, 19 to 65, are deficient in this vitamin. And if you caught the title, you know what vitamin it is. But you might not know what deadly condition it can help you prevent. But first, I'm going to cover the sciencey stuff about vitamin D really quickly. If you don't know, vitamin D is an oil-soluble vitamin that serves several important functions in the body. It helps absorb calcium and phosphorus from the diet through the intestines. It suppresses the release of parathyroid hormone, which is used to break down your bones. It's measured in the blood with the serum levels of 25 hydroxy vitamin D, which is usually in a concentration between 20 to 40 nanograms per milliliter. Anything below that is considered suboptimal. So now that we got the sciencey stuff out of the way, you might be wondering, why the hell do I care? Well, hold on, because I'm going to get to it in a bit. But first, we got to know what it does. Vitamin D helps promote optimal bone growth and prevent osteoporosis. What this means is it also helps break down bone growth that's not intentional. In addition, it helps with muscle strength and mental focus because of the calcium it helps carry. Vitamin D promotes the transport of calcium into your body for function. It's recommended that 600 international units are taken every day by adults ages 19 to 65. However, 90% of adults aged 19 to 65 do not have enough vitamin D. As a result of a low vitamin D, you're at a higher risk of fractures, injuries, poor recovery, and what's worse is the risk increases with age. Now listen up, because these things are clearly linked to low vitamin D. Lack of vitamin D in your diet, in addition to low sun exposure, is clearly linked to vitamin D deficiency. Which makes sense, because the sun helps promote enzymes that convert to vitamin D in your body for absorption. So if you have low sun exposure, you're going to be at risk for low vitamin D. What's worse is that the enzymes in your body that help convert to vitamin D in your skin decrease as you age. So not only are you at a higher risk of injury as you get older, but the enzymes that help fix you decrease as well. Which means as you get older, you're at double the risk of injuring yourself because of vitamin D deficiency. Now, vitamin D gets absorbed in your intestine. So, that means if you have less intestine or it's injured, you're going to have decrease in absorption. And this happens a lot to people with gastric bypass. If you have gastric bypass, you have less intestine to absorb vitamin D. Therefore, you have vitamin D deficiency. In addition, if you have injury in your intestine, such as Crohn's disease, celiac disease, or cystic fibrosis, you're at a higher risk 
of vitamin D deficiency. And finally, if you have kidney or liver disease, you're at a higher risk of deficiency because these are the organs that produce the enzymes to help produce vitamin D in your skin and help you absorb it. But wait, how can I tell if I'm deficient? You're probably wondering. Well, there are a lot of clear signs. The first of which is bone tenderness. If there's pain around areas near your bone, you may have a fracture. So you may want to have it checked out, but you also may want to have your vitamin D checked as well. This is one of the biggest signs of vitamin D deficiency. But we're not just talking about one bone fracture. It may be an injury, but if you repeatedly have bone fractures, it is a clear sign that there's something wrong with your bones. And it may be vitamin D that's contributing to it. The third way you could tell if you have vitamin D deficiency is lowered immunity. And you could tell this if you have a wound that has trouble healing. Let's say you have a wound that takes longer than three weeks to heal. It may be something to look at. If you have constant lung infections or urinary infections, vitamin D may be one of the contributing factors. The fourth sign of possible vitamin D deficiency is bone deformalities. If you notice a growth on your bones that's hard and hasn't gone away, it may be that the bone isn't breaking down properly. And as we talked about before, vitamin D contributes to the reabsorption of abnormal bone growth. It promotes optimal bone growth. So if you have any bone deformalities, it may be because of your deficiency. In addition, another sign may be dental deformalities. Teeth are just exposed bones. So if you have abnormal dental growth, it may be a vitamin D deficiency. If your teeth are getting brittle and soft, it could collapse when you bite into something hard. It may be a problem in your vitamin deficiencies. Or if you have growth on your gums or teeth that look abnormal, like excessive calcium growth in your gums, it could be a vitamin D problem. The next signs that contribute to vitamin D deficiency are indirect because of the calcium absorption. Vitamin D helps you absorb calcium. So if you don't have proper calcium absorption, you could have seizures because calcium is responsible for nerve transmission. And if you don't have proper nerve transmission, you may get seizures. And seizures can contribute to dangerous after effects. If you have a seizure while driving, you could crash your car and injure people. If you have a seizure while you're walking, you could collapse and hit your head. There are many dangerous results of having unprepared seizures. Another result of vitamin D deficiency is muscle spasm. Calcium is not just responsible for nerve transmission, but for muscle movement. And if vitamin D isn't there to transport calcium in to help muscles move, you could get muscle spasms. If you don't collapse from the muscle spasm, another sign could be muscle weakness. And this is the fatigue that people feel when they have vitamin D deficiency. The next thing that could be a sign of vitamin D deficiency is joint swelling. Because your bones are weak from vitamin D deficiency, they're not supporting the body as it should. And as a result, it's the joints that take up all the pressure. With excess pressure, the joints are going to swell up. And that is a sign of vitamin D deficiency. Now these next things aren't directly related signs of vitamin D deficiency, but can clearly contribute. And one of which is that the highest rates of vitamin D deficiency is in non-Hispanic blacks. Even though they're clinically shown to have better bone density, their vitamin D levels are lower. More studies need to be done to figure out why specifically, but they found a clear link between the two. The next thing is a highly processed diet may be a sign that you have vitamin D deficiency. Highly processed diets do not have the nutrients that are required. Now it may not be a sign or symptom, but it can contribute. The next two things that can contribute to vitamin D deficiency is sunlight exposure. The first one is an indoor occupation. In a modern society, we don't work outdoors as much. So our exposure to the sun during the daytime when we work is limited. 
If you work in an office environment, it is possible your sunlight exposure is very low, and thus your vitamin D production is low. In addition, in very industrialized areas like cities, there may be high smog levels. So the area you live can contribute to low vitamin D. In very seasonal areas, they may have limited sun exposure, which can strongly contribute to low vitamin D. The next two things that can contribute to vitamin D deficiency are dietary restrictions. One of which is low dairy consumption. Dairy products are high in calcium. So the industry also fortifies it with vitamin D so you can absorb that calcium. If your diet restricts the consumption of dairy products, you might not be getting the calcium and vitamin D that you need. Same thing applies to the next sign, is low consumption of fish products. A lot of nutrient dense fishes have vitamin D, and if you're not consuming fish on a regular basis, it may be a cause of vitamin D deficiency. There are also other signs that are possibly linked to vitamin D deficiency, but no data has been found. Signs such as trouble thinking, insomnia, hair loss, fatigue, dizziness, excessive sweating, heart disease, diabetes, and multiple sclerosis. These signs are possibly linked to vitamin D deficiency, but there's no clear correlation as of yet. Now there's one deadly disease that vitamin D does help, and that's with the big C, cancer. Vitamin D has been found to reduce your risk of dying from cancer. And if that's not a good reason to check your vitamin D levels, I don't know what is. So back to our story. Why am I choking down this can of salmon? Well, one three and a half ounce or 100 gram serving of Atlantic salmon contains 526 international units of vitamin D. That's almost the entirety of the 600 units recommended on a daily basis for adults. I work indoors a lot, so I have to consume enough nutrients to get the vitamin D I need. And you can get it naturally from nutrient-dense, calcium-rich foods like fish, liver, fatty fishes, mushrooms, egg yolks, and liver. You can also get it by having more sunlight exposure before 10 a.m. And that's important because sunlight is high in UV rays during the day, but it's low before 10 a.m. You want to get the sunlight with minimal UV risk, and that's before 10 a.m. In addition, you want to get that sunlight without sunscreen, because sunscreen blocks the enzyme from working on your skin to convert to vitamin D. And finally, you also want to supplement it. So why not just take a ton of vitamin D every day and make sure you're healthy? Well, here's the big problem, is that vitamin D is lipophilic. What that means is it's absorbed easily in the fat instead of water. And when it's absorbed in fat instead of water, it doesn't get flushed out with urination. It absorbs in fat and it stays in your body. And it stays in your body and accumulates. So what that means is the more you take of it over the daily recommended amount, the more it builds up in your body. And at some point, it becomes toxic. And you know what happens when it gets toxic is that you have an increased calcium absorption. And that calcium absorption is going to cause seizures, it's going to cause muscle spasms, bone growth deformalities, dental growth deformalities. You're going to have lower immunity, trouble recovering from injury, muscle weakness, coronary weaknesses. And what's crazy is as, as this calcium accumulates, it starts growing and hardening organs in your body. So it starts building calcium around your heart valves and your kidneys. It's basically turning you into a calcium statue from the inside. And as a result, well, not many people survive from that. Are you going to check your vitamin D levels now? Let me know in the comments down below. And until next time, guys, never give up on yourself.